Tell us what you think about the uh, being at the Vikings draft party. There's no first round pick. A little anticlimactic, but Jared Allen. Jared Allen. Allen. That's pick. all right. We got Jared Allen, which is great. Uh, he's going to be the leading pass rusher of the league this year, probably again. Yep. Um, I'll give up any draft pick for that. He's 25. He's going to be fantastic. Plus, he wears the number 69, man. Can't go wrong. Yeah, exactly. Wind me, dine me, 69. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So um, the, the fans are just loving it here. Every, everybody has high energy, of course, and not quite as much energy in the building as there would be if we had a first rounder. But the consensus is in. Jared Allen's going to be the bomb. Jared Allen. Here at the Vikings draft party, we're very pleased to be joined right now by the Vikings' very own Chris Cluey, the man with the golden leg, Chris. You're hanging out here uh, back at the back by another former Viking great punter, Greg Coleman. You're just signing for the fans and hanging out. Talk a little bit about the vibe, what it feels like here to be uh, to be chilling at Winter Park with all the fans. Well, I mean, it's just great because, you know, you've got all the fans around here. You know, we got a lot of booths set up for things to do. we got food, you know, the big screen TVs all over the place. And it's it's just a great time. I mean, you, you, get, you get to meet everyone that supports you, and uh, it's, you know, just a great atmosphere. And it's great for the fans, too, because of interactions like this. It's not a, not a lot of opportunities for fans to be able to walk up to their on-field heroes, uh, in this case, Chris Cooley, the punter, and, and uh, get to rub shoulders with you a little bit and, and just kind of uh, get to know you. It's a little bit different here this year because the Vikes don't have a first rounder, of course. We traded that first rounder to land Jared Allen. Talk a little bit about being a member of the team. Even though the, the atmosphere might be a little subdued here, you guys got to be pumped to have Jared Allen. Well, I think, you know, he'll be a great addition to our team. I mean, our defense is already pretty ferocious, and to have him there, you know, on one side of the line, that's just going to make it that much better. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think everyone's pretty excited with how the season's going to turn out. You know, we've got a, a solid nucleus of players in, uh, in what we have. And, I mean, if we can just put stuff together, I think we could have a pretty good season. So now we know that you're a very good punter, but I've also heard some rumors that you're a hell of a guitar player when it comes to the video games, man. Is, is, is this accurate? It is accurate. I, am, uh, I play Guitar Hero quite a bit. I actually have a, uh, a unit set up in the Players' Lounge, so when everyone else is doing their meetings, that's uh, I'm, I'm in there working on my Guitar Hero skills. It pays to be the punter, right? It does. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you down at training camp. All right. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. All right. Chris Cluey hanging out with testosterone. There's been several picks uh, that we want to go over now. Uh, starting with number five, Glenn Dorsey falls all the way to the Chiefs. They're ecstatic about getting Dorsey there. Yeah, the Chiefs have to love getting Dorsey. They definitely had a hole on their defensive line uh, after trading us their stud. But Dorsey falling to them at that pick, a, a lot of people had Dorsey as the best or one of the top two players in the draft. So for them to get Dorsey there, they have to feel like is a real steal. And another team that has to be elated with the guy they're getting where they're getting him is the Jets. Vernon Golston goes number six to the Jets. Yeah, a versatile player who can who can bring the fat rush off the defensive end position. They may elect to play him at outside linebacker because he does have the versatility to do that. So a nice move for them because they knew that the Patriots who selected number seven would definitely take Golston if they didn't pass or if they didn't take him. So a kind of a, a good defensive and offensive move for them because they're able to get a player that they can turn on the Patriots here in the future. Right, and once the Patriots missed out on <laughs> Golston, they took that opportunity to move back in the draft. They pull a trade off, Jeff. Uh, allowing the team that was sitting at number 10, uh, the Saints, to move up to number 7. And the Saints really address a need with a player that I like quite a bit, Cedric Ellis, a big hog, interior defensive lineman, run-stuffing type guy. He's going to be in the fold for the Saints now. Yeah, Cedric Ellis going to the Saints. They moved up from number 10 to number 7 to get him, making a trade with the Patriots. He fills a nice need for them along their defensive line. And I'll tell you, with the work that the Saints have been doing this offseason, you can tell that they really are trying to make their way back to the playoffs and become a force in the NFC South. And then there was a trade again out at the 8. Baltimore probably frustrated that they missed out on Matt Ryan, who went at the three. Baltimore elects to make a move with the Jags, and the Jags move up, wasting no time taking the, the next best uh, defensive end on the board, Derek Harvey, a guy that Vikings fans were thinking we might get before we land Derek Allen. But now Derek Harvey, he's headed to Jacksonville. Yeah, well, obviously, Derek Harvey wasn't going to fall. Seems to me like Jacksonville moved up and made the first reach of the draft. Uh, not in a strong reach by any sense of the means, but I, I do like Derek Harvey in the Jacksonville system should do very well under Jack Del Rio. Then sitting at the number nine, the Bengals, they've had a lot of offensive uh, news happening lately. What will Chad Johnson do? Will he be back? They take this opportunity to address defense, which I think was a wise move for them. Keith Rivers, a linebacker from USC, 
he's now a member of the Bengals. Yeah, and, and the Bengals really needed a middle linebacker here. I, I really like what they did. Uh, I, I actually, I think that he might play the outside because they know that they traded for uh, Jonathan Vilma from, this, uh, from the Jets earlier in the offseason. So I'll be very interested to see where they play Keith Rivers, but he's a good playmaker regardless. So then at the number 10, the Patriots had moved down from uh, their pick at 7. They land at 10. When you talk about reaches, it's not something you see the Patriots do very often, Jeff. So if they're reaching for a player, they must know something we don't know. I don't know much about Jared Mayo, Jeff, Well, he from is Tennessee. a relative unknown. Uh, he comes out of Tennessee. He's outside linebacker. I know that it fills a real need for the Patriots. Uh, their right. defense had somewhat of an exodus here over the offseason. So, um, you know, I, I'm never going to doubt the ability of, Bri of uh, Bill Belichick and his staff to, to choose talent. So it's going to be a good pick, in my opinion, because it's the Patriots. So that caps off the top 10. We're going to be back talking more about some of the skill position players for you fantasy junkies out there. There's some guys starting to fly off the board here in the middle of round one.